So this might be my masterpiece. So in this video, there will be a lot of painting. There'll be Photoshop, there'll be photo shoots. There will be problem solving and disastrous attempts, but this is gonna be an awesome video, a big, big painting. I'm super excited. I spent a lot of time making these videos and we're even on the roof right now in New York City. So hopefully you like and subscribe and stay tuned for this entire project. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new, <laughs> Welcome to my crib. So this all started over a year ago when another awesome YouTuber and artist, Jess Carp, came to visit me at the studio. We did a whole bunch together. There's a whole video on that if you want to check it out. But we did a photo shoot together. We took some awesome photos of each other during her visit, but Jess took the photo. Dressed up like an old master, holding an easel in my hand, looking off into the void. It was just the most amazing photo ever taken of me, I think. And I knew I had to paint it one day. And Jess, you said you'd paint it also. Oh my gosh. What do you think? Amazing. We nailed it. High five. Okay, so is this something you're gonna paint eventually? Yeah, maybe. What the heck? So before painting, I wanna do a sketch, a pretty good sketch to get familiar with the values. This isn't a mega strong drawing, per se. It was just something for fun, 90 minute drawing to get familiar and really, I guess, just to get in the zone. The boy who lived come to die. Oh my God! All right, so now for what we're gonna paint on, this giant wood panel. It's pretty epic. I think this might be the biggest wood panel I've ever done. Actually, I think I did a three by three feet. Anyways, this is generally larger than I go, but I just love wood panels. They're just really fun. The last project I did was a wood panel. This bad boy, which I really liked, and I like this frame that you get with the wood exposed. I'm gonna do the same thing. And the prep is the same as all the other canvases I do. A few layers of gesso. This one happens to have some tape bordered around it, but a few layers of gesso, sand, and I just keep repeating that until I get the surface quality uh, and smoothness that I want. Come on, come on. I thought I had to get into character, you know, really embody the master, but we're just gonna attach this French cleat here right into the wood. Where's my drill? I don't know if they had power drills back in the day though. All right, pre-drilled some holes. Oh yeah. So now, <laughs> oh, this thing is cumbersome, but I look good. Okay, this isn't in all the way. Come on, Betsy. All right, strip that screw a little. No worries, because it still works wonderfully. So now my canvas is set up on my French cleat wall, and we're ready to begin. And for the first time in a while, I got new oil painting brushes. Some of these are for acrylic, specifically short handle synthetic, but all of these are all for oil specifically. We got a lot of Utrecht, Utrecht, botch the name, long handle synthetic brushes. These are super popular. I'm sure you've seen these sort of colored bands. There's so many different types of brushes for oil painting. People get confused a lot. There's natural hair, hog hair, same thing, I guess, synthetic, sable, all serving different functions and purposes for techniques and effects when painting. I actually talk about a lot of this on my premium tutorial, uh, the portrait of my girlfriend. I talk more in depth about this. Also the whole painting technique. If you wanna check that out for a longer version, explanation, but I am a firm believer that investing in high quality paint brushes are better, is better than investing in high quality paint. I think there's a big difference between good and bad paint brushes versus good and bad oil paints like this stuff. This stuff is great. Oil paint's the best. I love it. There's so many different types. We got Gamblin, which is the cheaper version. There's also Williamsburg I use, which is more expensive. Also Old Holland, very expensive. There's not a giant difference, especially if you're just starting out. You know, maybe only if you're a master, you'll be able to tell the different pigment ratios versus some companies that use more binders. You know, I am a no master, even though I'm dressed like one. It's just really hard to tell the difference, you know. Also different companies 
use different types of pigments that look the same. Some, you know, zinc or titanium white will dry slower than others. You know, a burnt umber from Williamsburg is gonna be different than a burnt umber from Old Holland. And some, you know, artists may prefer the cheaper brand because of the viscosity of the paint and the mixture. So it's all different and you're not gonna notice much of a difference versus paintbrushes. I think you're just gonna see a completely different sort of range of good versus bad. And I have a lot of paintbrushes from six, seven years of painting. A lot of them have gone bad or I just didn't clean them properly. But there's nothing like some new snappy brushes. Again, I am no master. So take everything I say with a grain of salt and you just have to find out for yourself. What I am a master in, more than painting I think, is online presence and creating businesses. And I wouldn't be able to do it without the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. As an artist, as a business owner who sells things over the internet, I need a website. A website is the most important aspect to a business owner and also an artist in this day and age. You know, Instagram is not the best place to sell work anymore. You need sort of a homepage, a gallery portfolio. In my opinion, Squarespace is the best website to build a website. They have the best templates. They make it unbelievably easy for you with award-winning templates, 24-hour customer service. It's just a no-brainer if you're trying to build a website. My entire drawing organization where I host drawing sessions and art classes here at the studio is built from a Squarespace website. I have a ticketed platform on there where people can sign up like a yoga class or a gym membership. It's very powerful. You know, there's a lot of e-commerce capabilities as well within third parties. It is just super, super useful. Squarespace user interface is also amazing. They use a drag and drop grid method. It couldn't be easier. There's no need for coding or anything. It's just all laid out in the easiest possible way. Check it out. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to build a website or get a domain, go to squarespace.com slash slew for 10% off. Let's start painting, finally. Whoa, well, I'm actually quite dizzy. And I'm addicted to coconut water. Ah, oil painting, and so it begins. This is a big project, big painting, lots of surface area, mediumly complex. So what we do with these situations is we break it down into zones, sort of the robe, the skin tones, the easel, the background, the hat. You could kind of separate these sort of painting sessions into zones and different mixing colors on your palette. That's how I sort of do it. So we're starting off with the robe. We are getting in the shadows, which is a good way to work because there's great shadow shapes. And this is only like three colors. So my palette is pretty simple and you know, I'm gonna go back eventually in a second layer. My agenda and job is just to get oil down. That's the only goal. If you've seen my videos before, that's what we're doing. I seriously don't really know what I'm doing. I feel like a lot of the times during these first um, stages, but starting is the most important and then just figuring out from there. But you gotta start. And uh, so the robe is looking good. I really like the robe. I've done a few robes in the past, but you know, drapery is actually super challenging. And this background um, is awesome. I changed it from the original, which we'll talk about very soon, but it's just a super dark, but saturated blue. And it's gonna be wacky. I think it's gonna be quite delicious and um, it's a big background. So here we go. Like, what the heck is with that colorway of the ruffle neck collar? Why is there blue? Well, I'm going for this quote unquote anti-naturalistic style for this painting. I want to switch things up. I want to have a wacky fun time. So the original edited photo is beautiful. It looks great. Dark green background. I love it. But then I threw it into Photoshop again and really messed around with some of the colors and I want to just get weird. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out exactly. The skin tones are going to be the biggest difference. Really, really strange, almost sickly looking, but I haven't even started the skin tones yet. So we will see how it goes, but I'm just trying to have fun with it and do something very not naturalistic, if that makes sense. And so this color style theme is definitely sort of new. I wouldn't say it's a risk, but it's definitely challenging. It's just for me to have fun and switch things up. It's not super different colors, like I'm not making the skin tones blue or something crazy. It's just using a lot more green um, and, and making everything a bit cooler in temperature. 
Um, and I don't really know. It's sort of me figuring it out. I have the reference with the photoshopped colorway, but you know, it's a whole different experience when you're mixing the paint, but really fun. And that's what I like to do with oil paint in these projects, especially when there's not much skin tone. It's just the face and the hand and I love portraiture. So really messing with the skin tones for the portraiture is just super fun for me. And that's what you need to do to come back to painting and making uh, projects exciting as well as challenging. But you can see it's it's really wonky. It looks kind of crazy. Um, using a lot of red for the nose and then everything else is basically like this dull green. Um, but I love this hat. I got this hat on Etsy years ago, like five years ago. I've used it for so many projects. It's really fun to paint, also quite simple. So I'm happy with this, um, this first layer of the face. You know, I was just figuring it out, but I'm happy with the color tones I went and I was excited about it. But that's sort of where the excitement ends because I'm trying to just, again, fill the entire canvas with oil paint and these first layers are brutal. Like you could see that hand that I didn't even record because I forgot. It's super wonky. It's a super challenging um, hand pose, the one that's holding the palette, but even the one that's holding the paintbrush going across my um, torso, it is just not looking great. Um, so I'm kind of saving those for the end and I didn't film as much, but this sort of second pass at the um, at the face, at the portrait, I thought it was awesome. And I'm gonna show you sort of the before and after of the second pass. And I think it's really interesting to see the foundation and then laying in the lights and going darker as well. You know, that's sort of how my brain works. It sort of needs two passes, but I thought I'd include that. And then, oh by golly, these hands. Oh man. Yeah, I really don't know. I think I just am just bad at painting hands, but for some reason, this hand pose, it looked like the fingers were cut off because of the perspective of the photo. I really did my best and I think they are fine, but they just don't look right. And I have very high standards and it just slowly kills me and eats me away, but that's fine. You can't make everything perfect in a painting and over painting and over painting it. I would just get more frustrated. So it's one of these things where you just, you just leave it be and then next time prepare more or, or figure it out. Um, I had to really sort of get this video out because I was procrastinating and I have a million things to do in my studio so I couldn't just repaint it a million times but overall I'm super excited super happy the composition everything about this painting is just really great it's just really fun I love self portraits this was like a bigger experience of that idea but all the colors we're gonna talk about it all right now All right, so first, the studio is in a disarray because I'm actually doing another giant renovation. That's why this is so weird. Wood, things everywhere, expanding studio slew. Check it out. So I wanted to give a little uh, self-critique um, of this painting, a little rant at the end of the video. I think that's fun to do, and I like to articulate my painting process and share it. If you've even stayed to the end of this video, comment Snickle Fritz. So I know you watched to the end. So a lot of things going on with this colorway, very different, you know, mediumly successful. First of all, general theory for myself when critiquing or, you know, analyzing the success of a painting, it's never 100% successful. You know, there's always things that I think I do well and things that I think strongly are weak or need improvement. Generally, I'm happy and painting in general Executing and finishing a painting in general is a success. Also, I'll mention really quickly that the painting has just been finished, so there's a little weirdness with the layers. Some is glossy, some is more satin. I got some other shots um, a few days ago when it finished, but things are drying weirdly now. That's why the finishes may look weird on this shot specifically. But the hand, because it's in this weird angle, the perspective looks like my fingers are chopped off. I couldn't nail that, not great. Um, I really like the color tone. I think the, you know, the face, the portrait is the most um, successful part. Really fun, chunky paint textures in there. I love painting like that. It's very loose, um, representational, a lot of energy with the paint strokes. So I'm really happy with that. Also happy with the ruffle neck collar, the color, the tone, the chunkiness and the highlights. But I will say that also just like the ruffle neck collar, like the hand, it, I just didn't nail it. I, and I haven't nailed it. I've painted this a few times and all of these under layers, I just maybe was too lazy. This right here, this part really just ergs me as a whole. 
within the painting, it looks fine. Um, but if I'm just looking at this as like an individual uh, chunk, it's just like, ugh, kind of annoying. Love the gown. Again, I went a little chunky. You could also see that maybe you didn't notice there's this sort of gradient from my left shoulder down here. It's like warmer, greenish, gray, and it slowly gets cooler to like purple and blue. This obviously more in the light because the light's coming from up here. So I thought that was really great. I really enjoyed that. And the same thing with this easel. It's very subtle, but it's sort of this um, grayer, greenish light. And then as it goes down, it gets into this deeper, warmer orange, um, a cool kind of gradient. I think the palette looks great. I mean, I didn't spend much time on it. It's very like simple. Um, it just looks cool, it's just fun. It's just so classic to have that palette there for um, a lot of you know OG masters paint themselves. Um, anyways, the paintbrushes are whatever, but this I think all turned great besides the hand, the insane version of me holding it. Um, so that's just what I want to talk about real quick. I like the, the darkness of it again, the difference between my deepest values, which is basically almost black. I don't think I really use black. It's like an ultramarine blue how dark it gets down here, under the palette, you know, under the hand, under the ruffle neck, and then, you know, to the light. The contrast of the face is very bright. I mean, the ruffle neck is just white, which maybe I went a little too bright is a critique. Um, but the contrast of the face and the background, this insane deep blue you get with ultramarine oil paint, man. That's what I'm saying. So, great, all around. That's just what I wanted to say in case you were wondering it's funny, I think I'm so hyper-focused on everything during the painting, a day after, a day or two, editing this video. And then what will happen is I have another video that I'm working on or I'm going to do this whole renovation in the studio and I completely, utterly forget every aspect of the painting. That's why I love having these videos to talk about it. But I'll hang this up or it'll be in like a shelf or somewhere where I won't see it for many moons or months and I'll just forget. And I'm sure I will think of it differently if I ever look at it in depth, you know, again. So that's just interesting. I thought I'd share that. That's all I got. Rant over. Stay painting. Stay tuned. See you in the next video.